CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to review the Yesu 891 and how I use it for Summit's on the air. And, of course, why do I use this thing? So, this was the first portable QRO HF radio that I bought for doing Summit's on the air. It puts out 100 watts, and at the time, um, I was having difficulty getting contacts on sideband, and I didn't know anything about spotting, so I didn't have any pileups to work through or anything else. So <laughs> um, I figured, hey, if I went out and got a 100 watt radio, I'd have a lot better chance of getting my four contacts from a summit uh, to get my points. So um, it was in. It was this radio was introduced as the 857 replacement uh, in Dayton in 2016. So probably was shipping right about the time I started doing summits on the air. Um, it was new, it was digital, so hey, digital is always better than analog, but wait for it, not always. Um, it um, also pairs really well with the MFJ939 automatic antenna tu tuner. Um, it's powered and controlled by the radio. Uh, a little button on the front of the radio will kick off tuning. Now, this became important for me as I started to find that some of the summits I was on I was getting much higher SWRs on certain bands, um, causing the radio to cut out during transmission. So um, I tried a couple of antenna tuners, one from LDG and then this one from um, MFJ, which as you know works with the 857 as well. So that pretty much resolved all the issues that I have and it allows me to use a random wire or other antennas that may not be perfectly uh, tuned up for the radio. Um, the radio is rugged and reliable. It has decent uh, SSB sound. Um, if you have a good strong signal, certainly their, their digital noise reduction is awesome. Makes it sound like FM. Um, the radio is great for SOTA and POTA HF operations. Um, there is some sideband and CW digital filtering and we'll cover that during the actual use. Um, I've put most of the common, well, most of the common features that I need from a summit are all on the outside. Um, now there's a few that you have to drop into a menu, but I really like the way they implemented their menus for some of those uh, changes that I need to make quickly. Um, kind of there's three sets of them and it's it was a, a, an inventive way of implementing those. So it works pretty well. Um, I'd prefer to have a few more buttons on the outside, but I've programmed the three which you can do on the front, uh, the A, B, and C, to give me tuning um, and a couple of other settings for like uh, turning on digital noise reduction and the narrow filter, uh, especially when doing CW, can be handy. Um, so I've used this radio on over 100 activations. So I put this in the pack along with a much heavier battery that will take the uh, power draw of this radio because hey if you're going to spend money on a 100 watt radio and haul it to the top of a mountain might as well run you know with 100 watts but you need a battery that will uh, support that i was told by bioino that i had to have their i think it was a 12 amp hour battery um, to support the power draw of this radio so that's what i got and of course i'm running antennas that will support a uh, 100 watt output so with that, there's your overview, and um, what we're going to do is go out and see how does this thing work for summits on the air, and uh, uh, you can judge for yourself. Hello. Today we're going to test another radio, the uh, last of the QRO radios uh, for a while at least. There may be one more in our future. Um, I have traded out one of the radios in this bag uh, that we went over last time with the Yesu 891. That's the follow-on radio to the 857. Um, pretty much uh, has all the same capability except there's no VHF. So it's a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit lighter. We'll look at the stats uh, when we get to that portion. But as you probably figured out, um, this is the part where we go out and see if this thing works for summits on the air. Today we're on Mount Helix, uh, which is a small drive up 
Um, I was trying to beat the heat this morning, but couldn't get out soon enough. So dropped the hike portion and decided to do a drive up here in San Diego where we're going to try this radio out. We're also going to use a little bit different antenna and uh, we'll take a look at that when we get up on the mountain. Okay, we're at the summit. Um, just a small hike up some stairs and we're here. Um, wow. Take a look at the views we got here. Off to the north and out to the ocean. A little uh, smoggy this morning, but some great views off of here. If you're uh, ever in San Diego, uh, bring your radio, come on up, do a little summits on the air. So we're gonna get set up. I've brought a Chameleon MAM portable vertical antenna with a little uh, matching unit on there. So we're gonna use that today um, to get our contacts because uh, it should be resonant on a few of the frequencies, uh, certainly 20 and 40, um, 17. We'll see if it is on 10. I haven't, I don't think I've ever tried this antenna on 10 meters, uh, but we'll set this guy up really quick. It's great for uh, places where you need a really small footprint like here. Um, I'm gonna string the counterpoise kind of out here in the bushes so people can't see it. So anyway, let's get this thing set up and uh, get cracking. You've probably seen this on other videos and I've done a quick review of this uh, antenna in an earlier video. Um, I'll link that in the description. Um, also to note, the radio we are using today, you have probably seen already. It's my, in my opening credits or opening scene, if you will, for my videos. So um, I've used it quite a bit. I've done over 100 activations with the 891. It's a lot of fun. So uh, anyway, let's get cracking. Okay, I've got my setup there here. Um, the 891 is out. Um, so the I've made a couple of modifications to it. Uh, the first are these little side rails uh, that I don't know, look cool. They add weight, which is a really good thing when you're hiking and uh, bulk, which makes it easier to put into your backpack. <laughs> anyway, the other modification I made is back here. Um, the I took off the Yesu connector. There's a kit uh, that somebody came up with that allows you to plug the power poles directly into the radio. Now, I really like that because it's just one less thing to have to worry about. The only downside is that it, um, those poles are very likely to pull out, so they're not clicked in. It's really the only downside of those. Uh, you can make, you, you can set it up to where it won't do that though. So, over here I have the antenna set up now, um, the Chameleon MPAS unit. And it's, it's like tent poles. The whole thing just folds up and screws together. Uh, the top section, the green section folds up. It screws into the main poles, the heavier, they call mill extensions. I purchased an extra set of mill extensions to get the matching unit off the ground uh, because it performs, I think, a lot better. Um, hopefully, I just realized I strapped it to this pole next to this power distribution box. Hopefully that's not an issue for me. Anyway, let's get on the air and see how this thing works. Set the mic up next to the radio so that um, you can hear what the speaker sounds like. We're going to start with sideband and uh, see if we can get a few contacts. CQ, 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 N1CLC, summits on the air for any station anywhere. Now the SWR is about 1.5 to 1 on the antenna right now. Uh, so I think we're looking good. We spotted ourselves. CQ, 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 and one CLC. Summit's on the air. Any station, anywhere. Kilo Lima 7, Alpha November. Alpha November, go again. Uh, Kilo Lima 7, Alpha November, uh, State of California. Uh, I missed your call. I got N1, but I missed the suffix. Yeah, no problem. This is November 1. Charlie Lima Charlie summits on the air over in San Diego. Okay, Charlie Lima Charlie, Alpha November. Uh, 
see you on the back of the beam, so you're in uh, San Diego. We got you. What's that uh, park? Um, I'm not in a park. I'm in a, on a summit, uh, Whiskey 6 Sierra Charlie 352. And actually, I'm at Mount Helix uh, Park, so that might also count as a parks on there. I'd have to look it up, though. Okay, no problem. We got you. Uh, uh, US 352, is that correct? Uh, possibly. I'm at uh, Whiskey 6 Sierra Charlie 352, QSL. Okay, Whiskey 6, uh, gotcha, 352. Thank you. Good luck. Alrighty, have a good one. I got you 5-9. This is N1CLC. Summit's on the air. Any station, anywhere. Okay, we got somebody there. So, November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. CQ, CQ, Summit's on the air for any station, anywhere. <clears throat> it's a little bit of a different sound. Uh, kind of a... I don't know, I'd almost say tinnier than the 857. <clears throat> it's something that I wanted to show during this video. CQ, CQ, this is N1CLC. Summit's on the air, any station, anywhere. Whiskey, Whiskey 7 Delta. Whiskey, Whiskey 7 Delta. Daryl, I got you 5555 on uh, Sierra Charlie 352. Okay, I just got my antenna turned in your direction. Uh, you're a 59. QSL, QSL, thanks for the 5.9, Daryl. Um, yeah, I'm running 100 watts doing a little video on the 8.9.1 here. Okay, very good. Well, enjoy the rest of your uh, adventures out there in uh, 7.3. N1CLC, WW70. 73, dude. This is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie. Summit's on the air. Any station, anywhere. Kilo Juliet 6, uh, go again. Kilo Juliet 6, go again. Juliet 6, Zulu, Echo, Delta. Okay, I got a Kilo Juliet 6, Zulu, Echo, Delta. Got you at about a 5555 five, five in San Diego. Alrighty, thanks. Thanks for the contact. Appreciate it. This is N1CLC. Summit's on the air. Any station, anywhere. Okay. Uh, station uh, calling QRZ. Alright. November 6. I had to turn down the gain uh, to understand you. Could you go one more time? <laughs> QSL, QSL, November 6, Quebec, India Radio. Um, I got you 5'9", about 30 over. I'm up on Mount Helix. Well, then I guess uh, we should be uh, blowing each other's doors up. I'm in Kensington, San Diego. Have a good day. Thanks for the QSL, QSL, hey, thanks a lot for the contact. Uh, have an awesome day. All right, that's with the digital noise reduction on the very end there. It just takes all the background static and makes this thing act like FM on HF. So it's, I think it performs really well. What I had to do though was turn down the um, gain for the station since he's right around the corner. <laughs> CQ, CQ, N1CLC, Summit's on the air, any station, anywhere. Okay, I got a November Alpha 5 X-ray, X-ray, is that right? QSL, QSL, I got you five, uh, five, two, five, two, five, two. QSL, four, four, thanks for the contact, man. I appreciate it. Have an awesome day. QSL, QSL, this is November 1, Charlie Lima, Charlie, Summit's on the air, any station, anywhere. Alpha Charlie, 7, Golf 5. Station starting with Alpha, go again. Alpha Charlie, 7, Golf Mike. 
Okay, DNR on. Alpha Charlie 7, Gulf Mike, I uh, got you about a 5-5, five, 5-5. Five, five, five. Five five into Montana. Thanks a lot. I appreciate the contact. Um, and have an awesome day. Okay, it sounds a little weird today for some reason. That weird crackling sound. I have to look into it. CQ CQ N one CLC. Summit's on the air. Any station anywhere. Kilo seven Zulu Oscar. X-ray, I got you uh, at about a five tree, five tree. Five, 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 North Central Washington State. Five, five into North Washington State. Uh, thanks for the contact, man, and have an awesome day. 73. 73, N1 CLC, Summit's on the air, any station, anywhere. Summit to Summit Station, Summit to Summit, go again. Summit to summit, summit to summit, go again. Ah. We just can't pull them out. Maybe with headphones, but I'm not sure. Okay, no copy on the summit to summit. Maybe you can get me on CW when I switch bands. All right. We're going to jump over to some other bands here and try to make some contacts. Let me get the keys out and uh, plug that in. W B seven. He's at sixty two. Fourteen oh six two. Let's see if we can get him. There's with the digital noise canceling. There's a narrow band filter turned on. He's giving me a 5.9 into Montana Summit. This actually sounds pretty good. All right, that's with the um, uh, narrow filter turned on. I have these, uh, a custom in the front, I have tuner button, uh, narrow on off, and the digital noise reduction on off, and the clarifier on off. Um, I don't use the clarifier as much, I should probably change that to something else, but the nice thing I do like about this radio is that you can kind of customize these three main buttons in the front, so kind of handy. Um, and the menus actually to get into some of the core functions that you need are pretty easy to get into. There's two main um, uh, function areas where you can set pretty much everything that you need. Turn on AGC, set the key speed, um, the keyer speed that is, um, and turn some of the other features. So. So you can see how that narrow filter really helps kind of knock down and zero in on the signal. So he's right on 14062, so that's cool. Um, so that gives us a summit to summit chase. Let's see if we can move on to somebody else. I'm gonna turn the narrow filter off um, so we can zero in on the next one. You've heard uh, what sa sideband sounds like. I've turned the digital noise reduction on and off. Um, it actually works pretty well. Uh, sideband sound a little funky there when I turned it off and on a couple of times, but um, I think it's partially because the gain was turned up just a little too much. Turn that down, it sounded better. It makes the whole conversation sound like FM on sideband. It's pretty cool. So, um, on CW, just knock down all that background, but really the, the best part of the filtering here is the narrow filter. Um, this is all... Uh, digital signal processing so um, it, it just you know you get what you get I think it works pretty well it's actually better than I remember um, the narrow filter on here and I'm sure that if I hold this down I can probably change how wide that is but um, yeah, it works pretty well I'm pretty happy with it uh, 
today, anyway. It is a little bit harder to pull signals out on this radio CW uh, than using the 857, so I don't rate it as high, but the radio is smaller, um, making it just a little bit more portable. I'd almost pull these side rails off just to make it more portable. I'm not sure they're really needed, but uh, you know, it makes me look cool when I'm out in the field. <laughs> and it has a kickstand on it because the uh, I'm not sure the factory it, that the radio comes out of the factory with a kickstand. Uh, at 17 meters, this antenna is, is looks like it's under 1.5 to 1 SWR. So um, yeah, we're looking good. Um, unfortunately, the the camera shut down due to heat again right before I was able to work George KX0R in Colorado. It was a weak signal. Um, I would say even with a narrow filter on this, the digital narrow filter, it just doesn't work as good as mechanical filters. Um, it's a little bit harder to pull out weak signals. Now, if you have a decent signal and hit the narrow filter, it definitely sounds better. It pulls out some of that stuff, but I don't feel like I can really pull signals out like I can with this, with the 857. Um, sideband, it works great. Um, the digital noise reduction uh, at times works really, really nice to kind of just get rid of a lot of the background. And if you have a QSO going, it's, it's a lot of fun. So highly recommend that. The narrow filter on sideband doesn't really do a whole lot for me. Maybe I don't know how to operate this radio, but it just seems harder to pull out weak signals um, because of just how it comes through and how it sounds. So um, is it, I've used this thing for over 100 summits. Um, pack that, the big battery. Um, probably the last 50 summits I was hauling a matching unit because I've hit some summits where you throw the counterpoise down and everything's hooked up but your SWRs is just so high that you're cutting out. So it has to do with uh, the material um, that you're set up on top of. Um, now just one one other uh, thing here to note is um, the the antenna this Chameleon, uh, man portable, uh, MPAS, I can't remember what it stands for, Julian uh, uh, coined the phrase, but it's not much taller in my bag than my little push-up pole. I could also pull off this little matching unit at the top uh, to make it a little bit shorter, but I leave that on there just to make setup quick and easy and to keep everything together. It's easier to pack that way, I think. Um, but if I'm having issues, I can screw that off. But um, again, I have an extra, I don't, you don't have to carry the, the uh, mill extension poles underneath the matching in it. I feel like it performs a lot better getting the matching in it off the ground. So um, I've also set it up um, guide right off the matching in it, which six, about six feet off the ground. Um, at three points under high winds, you, you can't beat this thing for a small footprint high wind condition. You're not going to break this antenna. It's it's uh, <laughs> it's combat ready. It's really really tough. I've set it up on summits where I've had to kind of jam it in the rocks, and then guy it as well. And the winds were just howling. The the antenna was just way bent over, and it performed great. Um, I guess with the 70 foot counterpoise, it you might say, well, hey, it doesn't really handle a small footprint. But really, in essence, if you have a bunch of people over here, I can hide the counterpoise and just really kind of occupy a much smaller footprint. Um, so as you saw today, it worked on pretty much all the bands that I worked. Um, I've, I, again, I'll link to the description of what the SWRs I got in our previous um, video. Um, you also have to be, be, be careful with this radio that it doesn't get too hot. Um, I set up my chair here so it was mostly in the shade. I've had the radio shut down on me uh, on a summit. I didn't know why. Um, 
I couldn't finish my activation. I actually eventually debugged it, found out why, because the radio just got overheated in the sun. I think it's a brilliant idea to make all of our radio equipment out of black, you know, with black paint. So that way they soak up as much solar radiation as possible. Um, <laughs> um, this radio does pair well with the MFJ um, uh, tuner. So it just makes uh, running it a lot easier. I have used an LDG tuner where you have to basically kick off a manual tune and that's um, that's pain in the ass when you're up on a on a summit goofing around. So I could have run this radio with a random wire um, and that tuner as well. It basically goes into this uh, bag just like the 857 does. It's just a little bit thinner which you'll see when we get to the scorecard here in uh, just a minute. So with that we're going to wrap up the actual use of this thing on a summit doing soda. So let's head back to the shack and kind of do a quick review of the stats on this guy and uh, then we'll close it off. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay, that was fun. Well, let's wrap up the uh, review here with the scorecard. Um, so first of all, uh, the, it weighs about a half pound less than the uh, Yaesu 857. Um, it's also not that much smaller. It's a little bit thinner. Um, I don't even think it's a full inch. So um, it just looks smaller uh, than the 857. I'm not sure why that is, but yeah. Uh, it runs all bands. Uh, it runs multiple modes um, from sideband, CW, digital modes, AM, FM, etc. Um, usability is kind of where I have one of my big issues is there's lots of menus. I, I do like the way they implemented the top level menus and I'll show you that here. But um, for instance, changing the modes, you press the mode button and then you select which mode you want quickly with the main dial. Um, if you're not quick enough, then you know it reverts back to the main screen. Um, it, it's a bit wonky um, as compared to basically the, the toggle switch, if you will, back and forth on the 857, which is just easier to work with. Um, I do like the way they implemented the other function uh, menus that you use the most, uh, function one and two, as you see here, and then the key CW settings that you would also be using. So um, I like that implementation. There's a ton of other deep level menus like on uh, the rest of the EAC radios, but um, yeah, there's some pluses and minuses of how they implemented menus. I would prefer more buttons versus having to drop into these menus, for instance, to change the mode. That, that's a bit wonky. Um, they have some other ones on the outside that I never use. So um, yeah, the, the good thing is I can take three of those that are in these kind of top level menus and put them on three buttons at the bottom. Um, as you can see, I have tuner, uh, DNR, and the narrow filter right there. So that's pretty handy uh, to be able to do that customization. Power utilization, it's about the same as the 857. It, uh, it, it eats a lot of juice. Um, if you want to run a uh, full 100 watts, therefore you have to carry a bigger battery. Uh, the filtering and sound of this thing, it's not as comfortable to listen to. Um, it's, it's, it's really kind of hard to explain. You have to do some comparison. Um, I've had the luxury of being able to use an A57 to compare it to. I've heard other people say that, now I kind of get it. Chasing weak signals is just much more uncomfortable with this radio. Um, the narrow filter is nice, but I didn't notice it really helping me pull weak signals out any better than having the narrow filter on or off. The digital noise reduction, there are some settings for that. You can change uh, from, you know, I think it's up to three or four different algorithms, but uh, for sideband, it's pretty cool. If you're working a QSO for a while, it makes it much more comfortable if there's enough signal there. Um, you probably heard some really wacky stuff, and I think that's when the gain is set too high, it, uh, the, the DNR goes a little wacko. Lastly, let's get down to fun factor. It's heavy. It weighs less than the A57, but really not by much. 
Uh, the 939 antenna tuner is a perfect match for this radio uh, for the same reason for the A57. It, it gets its power from the radio and there's a button right there and you just hit it, the radio changes modes, does the tune, jumps back and you're off to the races. So um, yeah, that's that definitely helps uh, bring the fun factor of this thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have to bring this this antenna tuner, which is pretty good size. If you're hiking, which is what I'm doing 90% of the time or more, um, it's a little bit more bulk there. Um, and what I did is I compared the loadout from what I typically carry to say a heavier push-up pole and um, one of these radios, AV7 or the 891, and it's 13 pounds heavier than that loadout. Um, yes, there are ways to kind of lower that um, pain, but Look, I did it for 100 summits, you can too. And where the fun factor really ratchets up is taking a QRO radio to a mountaintop for the uh, Worldwide Sideband Contest. That is a lot of fun. I spent some time with K6ARK up on Whale Peak and just, it was like shooting fish in a barrel. My antenna thought it was up on a thousand foot tower and uh, I worked DX like crazy. And it was, it was just a, a great time up there. Um, working POTA with this radio is a no-brainer, um, so they're easy to get. In fact, you can buy a brand new one right now uh, from one of the various distributors. Um, if you'll sponsor me, I'll say who that is. <laughs> so um, there you go. There's the rundown on the ASU 891. Yes, it works great for soda. I've used it a lot, and uh, yeah, it, it's fun. Not quite as fun as carrying a much lighter radio, uh, which we're going to start getting into in our next reviews. We're going to start dropping weight like crazy and showing you some of the more um, hikeable mountaintop radios that um, Soda is known for. So I hope you enjoyed the review and uh, I look forward to uh, going over the next one with you guys. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and all that stuff could make my ego even bigger. Let's roll the credits. Okay, it really helps to turn the mic on when you do this. Just saying. All right, take seven. <laughs>